Started to get a little habit forming, Cardinals and Giants, LCSs, and certainly when the postseason started, you looked at the National League landscape, Mark, Kurt, and Manning, you had to believe that the Dodgers and Nats would somehow meet in this LCS, but it's these other two teams. Why is it these other two teams that keep showing up? Well, there's got to be a reason that I don't understand, because these are two teams I never pick at the beginning of the season, and they're always around <laughs> the postseason. And it's, it, it's, this is a hard sport to be in the postseason once, much less year after year after year, because of the schedule and the grind. You got... Basically, you got two very deep organizations, and I think that's the biggest thing is they don't call guys up to the big leagues as young players and look to see what they got. They call guys up that are big leaguers, act like big leaguers, and play like them. And if you look at both these rosters, both these got teams have been very successful in the last four or five years. Obviously, Cardinals winning the World Series, Giants winning two World Series, so they've all been there, done it. And so it's nothing, none of these situations are new for them, and they're very confident in those but situations. But there are new players in these situations. Yeah, but they do a great job of identifying the guys that are going to fit the, the system that they have in place. Talent doesn't always win in the playoff. And we all pick the Nationals and the Dodgers based on talent, names, you know, talented guys. But when it comes down to grinding it out, these two organizations do a good job, and, and that's what they do. I think the thing we, we haven't even mentioned, I think the only consistent over the last four or five years with these guys making the postseason has been the managers. Well, you know, LaRusso came the before me. Right, but yeah. what I'm saying, he, he doesn't know what it's like to go home early. Right. And, and, you know, that to me, with all the new players, integrating those new players. Stability. And, yeah, and getting, getting off to a good start in April, you know, or, or early in the year, is, a lot of it's on the uh, Then quickly, sort of, if you go X's and O's, Bumgarner's likely going to start in game one. And one thing that uh, the Dodgers, not that they're going to tell them, but they'll say, hey, the lefties hammered us. I mean, lefties beat up on Kershaw. They hit Ryu. He's a lefty. Can he contain the lefties of the Cardinals? He can. The way his whole delivery, the way he turns his back, it's an, it's an uncomfortable at bat. Not to say that Kershaw isn't, because Kershaw probably has better stuff, I guess you might say, but Bumgarner is not comfortable in that left-handed batter's box for those hitters. Yeah, Clayton showed you the first six innings how you pitch to him. I mean, if you have a really good fastball and you're moving around, he threw a lot of breaking balls tonight, though, which I thought was different. But he, he, he read that first game. I have a lot of faith on the, in the Cardinals. I mean, they have been able to adjust uh, against everybody. And if they were able to do what they did to Kershaw, even if he wasn't the seventh inning, I think they might be able to adjust to this guy and do some damage and stay in the game and win. Home field advantage, St. Louis. That's where game one of the NLCS is on Saturday. With Mark Mulder, Kurt Schilling, and Maniac, I'm Carl Ravitch.